this season, Lord, that we're just uh, humbled about what we do have. We're thankful for what we do have, Lord, and that we do show love to others, that we do give to others, Lord. And as we move into this uh, next year, 2017, Lord, with the new president, we just pray for this nation. We pray for the people, Lord, uh, to support him, to follow you in your vision, Lord, and to support whoever is in charge of this country, Lord. And we know that you, uh, you are in control. We know that you're going to have your way with us. Father, we just give ourselves to you for that. We love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going we're gonna to worship tonight. So you can stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship. As we warm our souls with, with music. Sing, come thou fount, come thou king. Thou found of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some bell, your dishonored, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Come thou found, come thou key, come thou precious prince of peace, hear your bright to you we sing, come thou found of our blessing. Lost in utter darkness. Can you relate? I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me. I was bound to all my sin when your love came and set me free. Now my soul can sing a new song. Now my heart has found a home. Now your grace is always with me I'll never be alone Amen Come thou found Come thou king Come thou precious prince of peace Hear your bright to you we sing Come thou found of our blessing Oh to grace how great a debtor How great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it Seal it for thy courts above. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing, come thou found of our blessing. Sing that again. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing, come thou found of our blessing. My hope is built on nothing less. In Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Is that true, church? Do you trust only His name? We're going to sing Christ alone He should be our cornerstone Christ alone Cornerstone face. 
When darkness tries to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the Trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. Amen. Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the Thy name, glory. 
Father, I pray that's what we're doing tonight, that we are glorifying your name. And I pray that we do that by how we listen and how we open up our heart to you tonight. I pray that we would listen to your words that you speak through Steve and that you've placed on his heart. I pray that you help us not to think about the Christmas things that we have yet to do. That we don't think about the weather outside. But God, that we focus on what you have to tell us tonight. So speak to our heart. And I pray that you challenge us with your with your words. In your name I pray. Amen. You may have a seat. Amen. Amen. Good to have you back. I, I know you're wondering, is it going to go late? Well, I miss the kickoff. No, I'm not going to go late. And whoop de doo if you miss the kickoff. There's DVRs out there. And it's an amazing journey that, that we get focused on. Anybody know the theme I've kind of been focused on in December? Joy. And you know, have you ever been talking about something and there's confirmation that what you're talking about is really what God wants to direct you about? There's, there's joy that just keeps on popping up all over. I've, I've gotten a number of Christmas cards lately that say joy on it. I've got an ornament that has been given to me, joy. And I'm like, this is truly, I believe, the people of God need to be joyful. I truly believe that. I believe if every day we woke up with a little more joy in our spirit than we know we have, our day would be better. The people around us would be better. Our lives would be better. Instead of waking up with that grinch, grouchy Grinch kind of mentality and attitude, yes, there's things to gripe and complain about, but I promise you there are more things to rejoice over there are than to be gripey about. Although there are all those stories, though, and, of course, the mom with her three-year-old son was running through the mall. Has anybody been to the mall lately? Don't go. Don't go, man. I'm just, I'm just telling you, man. It's nothing but hecticness there. Anyways, the mom was running through the mall there with her three-year-old just dashing in and out of stores, and, and little did she know that the little boy had stopped and planted his nose right in the window of the manger scene. So she was down there a few stores down and when she realized that that pudgy little hand was no longer in hers, the crisis kicked in and she's screaming the kid's name and he's just glued to the manger scene. Just fixated. It's one of those amazing mall manger scenes. You know how they can get? And he was just fixated on it. And as she screamed his name, he's like, Mom, look, it's... It's baby Jesus. And mom, not missing a beat, snatching him completely off the ground and making her way out of there going, we don't have time for that. I think that's our problem. I don't think we have time for baby Jesus. That little boy had it right. He stopped his whole life and planted his face on that window just to look at baby Jesus. And yet the adult comes by. We don't have time for that. Let me just tell you, I'm a Christmas fanatic. I love Christmas. I truly believe it. It's truly the most wonderful time of the year. I think it outranks, sorry Kim, Valentine's Day, which we were married on. But it still outranks that. I think it outranks the 4th of July and all the fireworks. I think it outranks every holiday there is because the feeling that we should get, that, that should open up with inside of us that joy that we've been kind of packing and pressing down over the whole year. That joy that we, that we truly have. And, and, I, and I love it. I mean, sometimes you might roll your eyes and I think, man, we've got 1,800 Christmas trees. I wish we had 1,900. I wish we could put up them starting in September instead of the end of October. I love Christmas. Because I promise you, in a few weeks, when you look around here and go, man, it sure does look plain. It's going to look plain in here. Carol and I both just feel like just having a balloon and just popping it. And, well, that's how I feel. It's just, eh. But right now, it's just amazing, even with everything going on in our lives, if we would just pause and truly find out what brings us joy. Not happiness. Happiness is based on circumstances. But joy is an actual feeling within us. It's down in our heart. And I think sometimes joy comes in Christmas carols, of course. Oh, holy night. I'm not going to sing it. But the thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. What about hark? 
I don't know how many people hark lately. Hark, them herald angels are singing. Hark the herald angels sing. And we think about those, those songs that we sing. What do they mean? Glory. Joy to the newborn king. Could you only imagine if the shepherds showed up in the manger scene and they're like, I told you so. It was just one of them babies. Yeah. Instead of going, oh my gosh, it's the savior of the world. It's, it's the savior of the world. Why can't we rejoice knowing it's the savior of the world? Joy to the world. Let the earth receive her king. And we think about that. I, I don't know if you have your Bible with you. If you do, I'm in, I'm in uh, Matthew 18. I was in there, but I moved. So I'm going back there. Matthew 18, and it's just an amazing chapter about, you know, the, the whole story there that we talk about, baby Jesus. And it says, now the birth of Jesus is as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed, promised, to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Spirit and Joseph her husband being a just man was not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away secretly but while he thought about these things behold the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary to take Mary your wife for that which was conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit and she will bring forth a son and you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that they might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. How can that not make us joyful to think that the God of the heavenlies sent his one and only son to be with us? Does anybody like it when family comes over? And I know you might be grumbling about certain family members. But for the most part, you like it when family comes over, do you not? When you get the family together, it is a joyful time. Until Aunt Susie or Uncle Bob shows up, then it's just downhill. And, you know, but you got one of those in every family. But, but for the most part, family is, is joyful coming. But then there are those... I, I do like it when people listen to my sermons because... I, I bring up Eeyore quite a bit because it's just like some of us. So I have an Eeyore quote. Well, last week, one of our church members was nice enough to get me an Eeyore ornament. So I, I, anyways, that's what it is. Here's a quote from Eeyore. I shouldn't be surprised if it hailed a good deal tomorrow, blizzards and whatnot. Being fine today doesn't mean anything about tomorrow. No bother. He must be from West Texas. It's really good hail today and be a sunny day tomorrow. Because even in Texas, I was sitting near the beach within a mile from the beach yesterday at 80 degrees, and I arrived in West Texas, negative 12 wind chill. The same day. Oh no bother. But to too many of us believe in, in Eeyore, but we don't believe there are the tiggers of the world. The joyful, bouncing around, just being excited about life, tiggers. And so many of us just kind of miss the joy. Can, can I ask you to maybe talk with me tonight? What's joy? What is joy? I figured somebody would pull out their phone, Google dictionary.com, and type in joy. But we think about that, it says this. Joy, to dance, leap, or spin in a motion of pleasure or excitement. How many of you leaped for joy lately? Maybe not physically, but in your spirit. You were overjoyed with something. Maybe in, in the way you walked, you were so joyful. Your head was just a little bit higher. Your walk was just a little bit more energetic because you were so joyful. Because it says, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. What if Shagri got up here and goes, you know what, today we're going to sing that much to me. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Man, it's just, that it doesn't make sense that we mimic the word joy and not believe in what it means to dance, to leap, to be excited. The scriptures tell us in Psalm 30, weeping may come through the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
And so I, I think about this. When we say joy to the world, what do we mean? What kind of joy do we want to give to, to the world? Well, it's just another day. It's going to be cold tomorrow. It was cold today. It's going to be cold tonight. Hey, folks, it's almost winter. What happens in winter? Cold. That's what happens. Now, in West Texas, it might be warm cold, but it's going to be cold. Today, it's cold. Last night, it was cold. Tomorrow, I think the high, 30-something, that's kind of cold. What does it happen in summertime? What do we say? Gosh, it's hot. That, the weather shouldn't affect our joy. It affects our happiness, sure. But let me just tell you, sometimes in our lives, we forget how to be joyful about things. Here's, here's just something real quick, and I'll just kind of wrap up tonight. Just three quick things. Here's how to be joyful. Worship Jesus. Worship Jesus. That should make you rejoice every single morning. In Matthew 2, 2, where is he who was born the king of the Jews? These, these were the wise men, the magi. For we have seen the star in the east and we have come to worship him. It didn't say we have come to whine to him. We've come to worship him and worship is a joyful thing. That's why we call it on Sunday morning. All right, folks, we're here to worship. Come on, let's get up, let's get moving, let's get excited. To worship Jesus. Think about that. If you're, if you're beat down about the world, then I've got to ask you, then what are you worshiping? Are you, are you worshiping the world? If you're upset at the stock market, if you're, you're mad at the White House, then what are you truly worshiping? I worship Jesus. That way I, I know when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, hey, thank you, Jesus, I'm safe. N nothing harmed me. Maybe a kick in the backside, that harmed me a little bit, but I got moving, I got up, and I got going. I'm physically able to, to kind of stand in my closet with my hand up, no, and go, I don't have a thing to wear. Hello? Yeah, I mean, some of us do that. I don't know what shoes to wear. Oh, my goodness. Or some guys who wear uniforms, stuff like that. Well, I'm put on my uniform again. At least you have a uniform. That means you have a job. You know, for, for farmers, it might be, well, I got to go get on that tractor again. I got to go out there in that field and strip again. You've got a tractor and a field. God had blessed you. That's to rejoice in, folks. Worship Jesus over that. When we worship Jesus, that means we come into his presence joyfully. Joyfully. Not jealous, not jilted, but joyfully. Here's another thing. Spend time with Jesus. We say, well, Steve, worshiping, yeah. Worshiping is excitement and not beating and singing, but spending time, that's in his presence. That's with his word. That's maybe with the hot cup of cocoa. And sitting in his presence. It says this. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear the son. And they will call him Emmanuel, or God, with us. Don't you think if he's with us, he wants to spend time with us? He doesn't want to just follow behind us. No, he wants to spend time with us. If he's with you and he's with me, he wants our time, our precious, precious time. And so many times I hear lately, oh, I'd be at church, but I just don't have time. It gets dark so early, and, it, and well, I'm just, I'm just going to wait till spring when the day is longer. Well, you weren't here in spring because there was so much to do because it's spring. And honestly, I'm just going to say to you now, you'll, you'll be with Jesus when he's the love of your life. You'll be with Jesus when he brings joy to you, and he does bring joy to you every single day. You want to rejoice in his presence and being with him. So many times we try to find other things to fill that hollowness. There's only one thing that'll fill the Jesus-shaped emptiness in our heart, and that's Jesus. Nothing else will. And so even at this Christmas time when we're running around, does anybody have at least one Christmas event to go to between now and Sunday? Just Sure, we're busy. Or you got some people coming, you got a little more shopping to do, you got a little more baking to do. But you always have time for that. But spending time with Jesus, opening his word and like, oh, it's just so, it's so hard. Really, it's not. I promise you, if Steve Carter can get in this and dig deep, then you can too. I promise you can. The passion of your heart will let you do what you want to do. And that's where we're at. And, and when we think about this, worship Jesus, spend time with Jesus. And, and maybe it's just this. We haven't submitted to Jesus yet. We, we haven't given him all we are. We haven't. Let me just, again, through some studies, this, this amazing things which you find out about songs. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. Theologians. 
What is error pining? Pine tree, there we go. That's exactly my first thought. Till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. Pining, the definition. To fail gradually in health or vitality of grief, regret, longing. Makes a little more sense when it says, Long lay the world in sin and in error grieving. Long grieving, long regret in failing health. The world was going to hell without Jesus. In sin and sickness, it was going down to hell. And then till he appeared and the soul felt his worth. Anybody ever been sick? (laughs) And finally it broke. The fever broke. The, The weakness was going away. And you finally felt healthy again. You could breathe. You know, I'm getting better. The world was on a downhill slide. Sin and error pining. We were, we were the product of our own sin. We were wandering away. We didn't have a Savior till, till He appeared. Till He appeared. And, and think about that. The sin, the soul felt His worth. And so many times we forget what that worth is. That worth is priceless. Jesus, Jesus came to pay a, a price we couldn't pay. That means He's He's priceless. And I'm wondering even these next few days, and just think, teleport yourself to this time next Sunday. You're, you're basking in the glow of paper, empty boxes, dirty plates in the sink, maybe a tipped over chair, empty hot cocoa mugs everywhere. I'm like, yes, this is what Christmas is about, family and sharing and showing. But in that whole midst of the mess, Will we miss Jesus? Will it all be about the presence and the food and the family? And will we skip the whole meaning of Christmas? Jesus. And I think this, it truly is a choice on what you'll experience over these next seven days. And they'll fly by, you know, Monday is going to be right here. And next thing you know, you're going to be galloping through the week. I've got to get it done. I've got to get this and that delivered and this taken care of. And before you know it, oh my goodness, it's, it's Christmas Eve. And, oh, Steve's got that thing going on that night. And oh, I just don't have time. Folks, we won't even be here for an hour Saturday night. But it's going to be such a rejoicing time to come, to see each other, to celebrate the the imminent birth of our Savior, to sing, to, to hear the reading of, of the birth of Jesus, to, to rejoice, to, to partake again in the Lord's Supper and then light candles to be the light of the world. That's what it's about. And then to go home and, and get everything ready for Christmas morning. And then, yep, yeah, come back that morning. But Steve, I was just there, just less than 24 hours. And I'm like, do we really spend too much time with Jesus? Somebody tell me yes and I'll, okay. We, we really don't. We don't spend too much time with Jesus. So, so I, I think the challenge is Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. If we truly had that meaning in our heart, that no matter what happens, if the wind blows 50 miles an hour and every cotton module tarp is gone, I'm still going to rejoice. I'm not going to let that wind steal my joy. I might not be happy about it, but I'm not going to be unhappy and be grumbly and grippy. I'm going to grab those tarps when I can find them. Going to tie them, strap them back down. Because you know what, guys? The blessing is you have cotton to tarp. There's some farmers who didn't get it this year. They got hail. And yes, you're still in the fields. You're still out there in the cold trying to get those machines going, trying to get that crop in. But I promise you, if you will learn to rejoice in the Lord always, the day will be much shorter Because you know those long, arduous, burdensome days when everything you touch seems to fall off or fall apart if I rejoice in the Lord. Just like last, yesterday's journey with me, I'll give you a little bit of peek. I was down there at Corpus, 80 degrees, get in the airplane, and somewhere along my journey, my driver's license fell out. I don't know where, but I don't have a driver's license now. My, My hope is that some good Christian has picked that up and has already put it in an envelope, and it's on its way back here. That's, that's my hope. But it hasn't stole my joy. I haven't go, oh, well, I've got to get the bicycle. I'm driving without a license. But, you know, I do have my concealed handgun license, so surely that's good if I hand it to the cop. 
but I'm going to go to the DMV, I'm going to resubmit or even get online and go, send me another driver's license and life will be good. But oh, I could have stomped and kicked and pointed my finger at God and said, what's up with that? I lost my license. It's not his fault. We get so wrapped up in the busyness of life and somewhere in my journey of 564 miles, it fell out. When I was showing someone, I was getting some, a boarding pass, whatever, and it, it, it's gone. I'm not going to stew over it. It's just part of life. But let me just tell you, I challenge you to rejoice in the Lord. Not just because of the fact that He has given us so much, but the fact is He has yet to give us much more. Can you only imagine what, what God has to give us through His Son that we have yet to receive the blessings that we have yet to receive if we just rejoice in Him every day and finding the silver lining in the 50 mile an hour windstorm. Now the silver lining is, somebody got my leaves. Now of course that neighbor of mine blew them all back today, but eh, I'm praying for another north wind. You know, I think about the things that we just stew over like, oh, you know, I had Christmas lights. John and we wrapped Christmas lights around the front tree. Now that just looks like, a, it's terrible looking because I got two squirrels that hate Christmas lights and they beat those Christmas lights down off that tree. It looks terrible. But you know, they're still on my house. Go weather tonight, they'll be sagging down. And, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get out there in 20 degree weather and rewrap my tree. I'm just going to be joyful in the Lord. I challenge you to rejoice this Christmas to, to worship Jesus, to spend time with Jesus, or maybe just to submit your life over to Him and then experience the joy that He has for you to experience. That's the challenge I give you in these next seven days. And I know they're going to be work, lots of work. I know there's going to be very little downtime, long lists. But, but I promise you, if you put Jesus at the top of the list, Everything underneath that will somehow come together. And next Saturday, when it's Christmas Eve, and you're sitting at home, and you can barely catch your breath, and you're thinking, oh, okay, let's go. You will not regret coming on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and spending a little extra time with Jesus. That's my challenge to you, to rejoice this week, to share that gospel of love and joy to somebody this week who, come Sunday, won't know about opening up Jesus. They'll just open up gifts that will either grow out of, break, whatever. And then what? Jesus fits. He fits everyone. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you tonight, and it is, yes, it's a cold night, but that's what happens when winter comes. Father, I just pray with my heart that we learn to rejoice in you. That we would be on fire with joy and love that the whole world would see. To just feel that with inside of us. Not, not that time where sin and error pining, where the, Lord was, where the world was going to hell without the Lord. And then Jesus appeared. And it filled my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and filling our soul. So let us rejoice in that tonight. Let us go out of these doors, shining brightly, not just inside but outside. Let us rejoice in somebody's life this week and share that love with others. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What can wash away sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh precious is the flow that makes me pray that's exactly what you want to do is overflow with Jesus because when you overflow then others have to get it 
They have to receive it. So don't hide it. Don't hoard it. Flow. Let it flow from you. I know a lot's going on. Check our website. We still have a, a women's ministry that needs some ladies to sign up for heart moms and heart sisters. I think that's right. And that ministry is kicking off in January. Maybe a new men's Bible study on Wednesday night. I've been talking about a new ladies Bible study starting up. There's so much to do. And if you're not doing any of it, then I've got to put that on you. And I know you're busy. But find time. Find that precious time to come and be joyful in Jesus. So lots going on. Check the baskets for cards. Put some cards in there. Angel tree still up. I think we have to have them by Wednesday, Carol? Or Tuesday? Pretty quick. Yeah, so if you grab an angel and you've already taken it, bring it back really, really quick. Put them under the tree because Verona is wrapping away. Um, also, this Saturday, Goodfellows are, are delivering, I think, 200 families in Terry County. So you can be part of that, 8 o'clock at the Terry County Stock Show Barn. So lots going on. Don't miss it. Saturday, 6 o'clock, Sunday morning, 1030. John, can you sing us on out yes. of here? I don't know if we got words for it, but we're going to sing Joy to the World. Great night.